Greetings, everyone. Uh, we are glad to have you here today. Uh, we're going to be discussing uh, our stealth uh, breakthrough regarding Intel AMT. Uh, we hope that you find this talk uh, informative and useful. Uh, unfortunately, Alexander and Maxim uh, could not be here with us today. Uh, but my name is Donald Anderson, and uh, I will be their replacement. Um, I work at Embedi, and with me today is my colleague, Dimitri. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Dmitry Vdakimov. I'm uh, the chief technical officer at Embedi. My interest is uh, uh, code analysis, reverse engineering, and automation with tasks, mostly in uh, uh, Python. I am also maintain Python arsenal for reverse engineering project. Okay, and at any point today or during this presentation, if you have a question, um, you know, feel free to ask us. Uh, we have a Twitter set up uh, with the hashtag ask about Intel AMT. Uh, and our team is standing by waiting to answer uh, any of your Intel AMT related questions. So, today's agenda will have us start off by breaking down the basics of Intel AMT before getting into some of our more interesting uh, uh, newer findings. Uh, we're going to start off today by taking a look at the architecture of an Intel 64 system. So here, this is a typical Intel 64 desktop last laptop uh, system architecture. Uh, Intel CPU is definitely the main execution environment. However, it's not the only one. Uh, there is also an additional chipset uh, which has integrated controllers and subsystems uh, which support peripheral devices and some other system functions. Uh, one of these subsystems is the Intel Management uh, Engine or Intel ME, which we are going to be speaking a lot of. Uh, it's an isolated, stealthy, and the most powerful within the execution environment. And when we say powerful, uh, we're simply referring to the capabilities that this system has. Uh, you know, it's capable of uh, controlling very critical systems. Uh, the common SPI flash contents are divided uh, into regions. The main region are the flash descriptors containing offsets and sizes of other regions, uh, and it's able to access permissions uh, to them. Each user of the flash could find its, find its region and, you know, for security purposes, wouldn't have access to other, other reason, uh, regions. Excuse me. Uh, so the next region belongs to the specific user uh, of the flash. Oh, there we go. Uh, the gigabit uh, Ethernet region exists for the network adapter and stores the configuration for its MAC address. Uh, the next region is designed for the Intel ME subsystem. Uh, it stores the Intel ME firmware. Uh, the ACPI EC region has appeared uh, since Skylark architecture, uh, though we've never seen the latter. Uh, so the ACPI EC firmware blob is included into the last region, uh, the BIOS. Uh, any program code that is running on the system is executed in one of these CPU protection rings. Uh, in ring three, you see, uh, you have user applications uh, that have the least amount of privileges in the system. At ring minus two, we find the system management mode, or SMM, uh, which is the most privileged within the, within the CPU. Its code is located in a hidden SM RAM, which is not seen uh, at any other level before it. Uh, however, uh, we were able to gain access to the most powerful execution environment. That is the Intel ME, uh, as I mentioned before, located in ring minus three. It has even more available access capabilities and memory isolation techniques. Uh, so now we're going, we are going to go more into depth here with the Intel ME AMT uh, architecture. Uh, besides the management energy memory control unit, uh, the subsystem consists of Mac level controller, uh, host embedded controller interface, 
unified memory architecture and firmware which is stored in the common SPI flash alongside the BIOS. Uh, this subsystem is generally thought of as the most privileged and hidden execution environment uh, and there are a few reasons for that. Uh, for one, the unified memory uh, architecture is hidden from the CPU. Uh, additionally, it has full access uh, to DRAM and out of band uh, access to network interface. The most interesting thing is that Intel ME still works and accessible even if the device is turned off, as long as the device is still plugged into an outlet. Uh, this subsystem is present on any Intel based system since uh, 2010. However, its name varies depending uh, on the platform type though. Year by year, the interest uh, of researching Intel ME has increased. Uh, the main problems with reverse engineering uh, this technology and its firmware are as followed. Uh, one, uh, Intel ME firmware code modules uh, use syslab uh, functions implemented in the boot code inside ME ROM. Uh, therefore, uh, it is difficult sometimes to understand the function behavior uh, without the knowledge of what syslab functions are called. Uh, fortunately, uh, ROM images can be found in the debug versions of ME firmware. Uh, two, a cer certain part of e Intel ME firmware code modules are compressed using the Huffman algorithm, uh, but this, the decompression dictionary is unknown, so the decoding is not, uh, not easy. Uh, though not impossible, the dictionaries for 6 to 10 versions were reconstructed. Uh, number three, one of the most well-known problems in the, is the undocumented communication protocol. However, the details of this protocol can be reverse engineered. Uh, for uh, the ME UMA library in DRAM is inaccessible for the main CPU. And then finally, Open Source Society has created a heading to disable Intel ME uh, subsystem, but this is quite difficult. A uh, method has already been pre presented to restrict the subsystem's functionality. Uh, by cutting the unnecessary firmware components. Uh, if you're interested in reverse engineering the Intel ME firmware, um, you will need a dissembler and a few scripts which you see here. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to put this presentation on our website. So uh, don't be, you know, don't worry about trying to copy everything down. So everything is going to be there uh, if you want to go back and check later. So Intel ME architecture and the security model understanding is an extremely broad theme. Uh, so again, uh, this will be on our website, so you could go ahead and take a look. So you could use these links to gain more information uh, regarding that. Uh, now onto the Intel ME firmware components. Uh, to understand uh, this segment of the presentation, uh, we really needed to provide you with some of the basics of the MT firmware architecture. Uh, the code is divided into modules and depending on the system, the code module list varies. Uh, there are the basic code modules such as the bring up and kernel modules in every firmware version. Uh, each of these modules implement the specific Intel technology. Uh, for example, Intel AMT. Uh, there are three firmware types. Ignition firmware, which is actually only available for the ME version 6 and is the minimal firmware size and contents. Uh, then we have the 1.5 megabyte firmware, which has incomplete module contents. Uh, and then lastly, the 5 megabyte firmware, which is the fully, which is the full, excuse me, has the full firmware contents. Uh, onto the Intel AMT architecture, uh, it is implemented as code module uh, inside Intel ME firmware. The technology itself is meant for remote control and administration of computer systems. So it allows powering on and off, resetting the system uh, and accessing BIOS uh, setup through serial over LAN. It also allows getting the information about the system hardware through the web interface. Also booting the system uh, from the custom boot image file. Uh, also acquiring the full control of the monitor, keyboard and mouse of the system. Any of, these, uh, any of these features requires only the target system to be plugged in and to have the official AMT support. Uh, 
regarding the VPro brand, uh, these capabilities uh, don't necessarily depend on an operating system of Target. Uh, moreover, it could be used to delete or reinstall it. There are several ways to access the Intel AMT features. Uh, the wired, excuse me, remote access of, is available through the wired or wireless network interfaces. Starting from certain versions, messages received on a wired LAN interface and addressed to certain ports are intercepted by management engine prior to reaching the OS NetSec. Messages received on wireless uh, interface go to the host wireless driver. The driver detects the destination port and sends the message to Intel AMT. Various local applications are able to access the Intel AMT features uh, the same way network applications do, like uh, WS management over SOAP over HTTP. Uh, and here are the most uh, well-known network ports that are used by the remote administrator to access the AMT system. So, thank you, Don. Uh, I will take the floor at this point. Move on to the next section of our presentation. And uh, let's have a look uh, at the possibility of unauthorized remote access to Intel AMT system. At first things to do is to look from a user's point of view at how the things are arranged. When users access the Intel AMT web browser via the 16992 port, they are referred to a, a logon page and a challenge with standard uh, uh, notification require request. So let's use Mint Proxy. Uh, now with help of uh, proxy server, let's analyze, analyze what is actually uh, happening in more details. As uh, for RFC uh, 2617, uh, digest unification, the first request gets, gets a response with uh, her 401 code, what, which means unauthorized. It's okay. Uh, then given a correct name and password, the server accepts one as a legitimate user. When given incorrect username or password, uh, Solar doesn't accept one. This kind of behavior is uh, not surprising at all. On this slide you can see a uh, network traffic of a uh, successful attempt. So, nothing extraordinary has uh, happened during the authentication process, but the detailed look at uh, the sniffed packets give us a clue of what uh, to look for in ME firmware. It is an authorization header field names. It is a bunch of strings like uh, username, real name, response, synons, nonce. Which string can be used for searching through firmware and pinpoint the very code that is responsible for the digest identification. Uh, for purpose of reverse engineering, uh, the Intel ME firmware, we will be using the IDA Pro disassembler and uh, a special loader script. This plugin was uh, uh, written in Python in, uh, and it adds to ME format, uh, and it's a support ME format uh, in IDA disassembler. It should be worked for all uh, uh, firmware versions prior, prior to 10. So after our talk, you can download uh, this plugin and uh, use in your own project. And after the loader completes parsing and otherwise uh, processing, the firmware will be have a nice and uh, clean uh, look onto the present code and data. And you can see on this slide. Uh, so. A quick search for the strings like uh, username, synons, real name, etc., uh, provides us with the exact strings within the next tag module. As we can see, uh, the, see they are all cross-referred from one uh, particular function. Uh, this function is responsible for processing uh, on a authorization header fields and uh, their overall uh, digest authentication. 
After a careful examination of the function code, we found an interesting bug. The exact place of uh, that bug is in the final comparison of the provided response and the computed response. Two values uh, were tested against each other uh, to see if they match, but the actual uh, number, of, number of bytes to be tested uh, was taken from the user provided response. Uh, thus, if one provides an empty response string, uh, string comparison function re returns zero. As the number of bytes to be compared is zero, and zero means uh, successful authorization. It's all back. So, let's repeat our previous experiment, but with local proxy. In order to exploit the newly found vulnerability, one can use a meter proxy tool uh, with a simple script that blanks the response field in the authorization uh, head of outgoing uh, request. It's a very simple script uh, which has a small size, about 10 lines of code. Uh, uh, need configure web browser. The web browser is configured to access the network through the uh, local proxy at uh, 8080 port. The password we have uh, just uh, typed in obvious incorrect because uh, the Intel AMT uh, doesn't allow password uh, uh, shorter than eight characters, but we will give it a try. So, for first request, we have uh, the same results uh, as a uh, previous uh, our experiment, but for then, uh, voila, take. Uh, we, uh, we have a uh, uh, code uh, uh, 200, which means uh, uh, successful authorization. And uh, please uh, take a note on the value of the response field of the authorization uh, header. It's empty. So, attacker is now authenticated uh, as a legitimate system admin. It has a full access to a variety of Intel IMT controls. He can do absolutely everything without knowledge of password. Uh, we check it with vulnerability on other Intel NT versions uh, from all the two new ones. Uh, to check them, we simply use a local proxy without any reverse engineering. After that, we reported this vulnerability to Intel, and then Intel offer us to participate in their uh, private bug bounty program on Hacker One, And uh, we were given uh, $10,000 award. So, uh, as must have understood, it's this authentication bypass vulnerability, which was later to know as CV 2070-5689. Uh, this vulnerability originally discovered in uh, beginning on this year, in uh, middle of February. So, for su successful exploitation, for attack only need uh, open uh, AMT port. It's, uh, for example, 16992 port. Uh, of course, uh, this system uh, uh, should uh, base it on Intel CPU and chipset and uh, have a valid BIOS and Intel ME firmware. It uh, all is required. Uh, this system uh, can uh, run on a Linux operation system or Windows, it uh, doesn't matter. O uh, only Mac uh, not affected because this code is absented on Mac computers. So the general idea, the the idea is attacker's possibilities and AMT capabilities as the same theme things. So, Don, need your help. Yeah, and how about the impact? Uh, according to Shodan, on May 2nd, there were 6,378 uh, available IPs with Intel AMT. Uh, however, it should be taken into consideration that Shodan's data uh, covers only the internet, while a good deal of Intel AMTs are used uh, on corporate networks. Uh, these corporate AMTs can easily be used by an attacker uh, who has connected to a network. Uh, the most impacted industries, as we see here, are uh, telecom providers and universities. Uh, it turned out 
that this vulnerability, vulnerability had affected ICS. Uh, for instance, Siemens industrial computers based on the Intel chipset were uh, susceptible to it. Uh, in other words, not only enterprises and public organizations, uh, but also critic f critical facilities uh, may also be affected by the vulnerability exploitation. So we have uh, a demo here that we're going to yeah. show you. Yeah, we want to show uh, some demo. So, uh, first to uh, configure a local proxy in browser on an NT80 port. And run Metal Proxy 2 at this part. Try to log in. It's incorrect password, and we can't log in. But then, it's, uh, we input a correct password. It's a very long password, and uh, a successful attempt. Then we uh, run our Metal Proxy 2 with our scripts. And uh, repeat our attempt with uh, password one symbol. That's all. We have a successful exploitation. It's the second demo. So. Let's go next. Okay. Uh, and after our blog post went public, uh, Tenable, a network security company, uh, was able to rediscover our vulnerability despite not having access to any of the technical details uh, of this vulnerability. Uh, and then after we released uh, the technical details, uh, the security community developed many useful tools and scripts uh, developed specifically for this vulnerability. Uh, one of the most interesting tools being honeypots. Uh, the existence of these honeypots now makes it uh, uh, very difficult to understand how many Intel uh, AMT systems are truly accessible uh, from the internet. Uh, now, how can we eliminate this vulnerability? Well, uh, Intel created a patch for this vulnerability and provided it to all affected OEM vendors. Uh, following this, all affected OEM vendors created new firm firmware, which is now available for users to download. Uh, because this vulnerability exists at the firmware level, you personally have to update it. So it's not going to happen automatically. So how many of you have actually uh, updated, or excuse me, installed this patch? So, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so now we're going to begin to uh, talk about our research, uh, which we haven't released yet, so you'll be hearing it for the first time just now. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Don. So uh, it's all good and well, but it, it is possible if uh, Intel AMT is activated. Yes? So uh, we wondered. Uh, if is it possible for attacker to spread uh, out the coverage of this vulnerability and uh, Intel AMT itself uh, to their own goals? As you know, Intel AMT is part of Vipro brand. First of all, uh, we want to understand how exactly the non-Vipro system differs from a Vipro system. So, uh, non vpro system is based on the HBP type chipset. It's more a cheap uh, system. Uh, when uh, vpro system based on Q type chipset from Intel, is more expensive. So, we check that non vpro and vpro system may have absolutely similar uh, Intel ME firmware images. So, Intel AMT implementation is often present on a non vpro system. This there is uh, Intel AMT code in all five megabytes firmware versions. It turns out that main difference is a uh, MapX uh, module uh, and uh, some uh, options in a BIOS uh, setup. It's uh, a BIOS model that uh, 
you, uh, that uses HECI to configure the uh, Intel AMT. However, maybe, maybe there are some hardware restriction, and uh, how um, can we interact with it and uh, make it work? Uh, the HECI interface seems to be a useful communication uh, channel uh, with Intel ME. It could be used, uh, for example, it could be used for uh, in debugging to gain uh, uh, the status of Intel ME or retrieve uh, some other information and uh, for many other interesting things. Unfortunately, uh, uh, it's pity the command uh, system is not public. Uh, uh, a little bit about uh, HECI. HECI interface it's, uh, is a bunch of register uh, set in PCI, SFG, and uh, double MIO. The message should be sent uh, through the cycle buffer in double MIO. The message uh, contain, should contain a, a Command. After the message is sent to Intel ME, uh, the acknowledged message is to be responded. There is a driver designed for this purpose in the system. Uh, you can see this driver in Device Manager. Uh, it, uh, it is this driver uh, that maintains the communication with Intel ME. The message protocol itself is based on DCMI HI protocol. Uh, to send a message, you need to know uh, the uh, GUID of the specific client you want to communicate with. Uh, there are some uh, known clients uh, with a certain uh, set of uh, capabilities. In our case, uh, to configure uh, the Intel AMT, the AMT HI clients must be used. So. Uh, the format of message with command varies depending on the HECI client you uh, communicate and quiz. So, for the AMTH clients, the, form, uh, the following format is uh, used. As you can see, the message uh, uh, has the group ID field, meaning the command uh, group identifier. Uh, each group uh, has a specific set of commands. To configure the Intel AMT, the 12 group ID must be used. So, after reverse engineering, we found commands for AMT activation and deactivation. The following commands must be sent one by one to configure the AMT. After sending the message, uh, don't forget to receive the acknowledgement. Very important model, moment. User interface for enabling and disabling AMT is absent on Intel non vpro system. It's, uh, that means user can't disable Intel AMT after activation on non vpro system. So it uh, will be persistent activated Intel AMT on system. Uh, after uh, uh, and then, uh, after uh, reverse engineering, we found uh, a command for deactivation Intel AMT uh, through HECI interface. It's only one command, AMT on provision. And uh, after that command, need a uh, uh, reboot system. Uh, but in one interesting moment, not need to uh, uh, acknowledge about password for activated Intel AMT. You can just uh, uh, deactivate uh, Intel AMT, then activate and uh, set up your password. So, uh, um, as a proof of concept, we create a tool to activate and deactivate uh, the Intel AMT on the system, both vPro and non vPro. Uh, the activator consists from two dr uh, drivers and one user space uh, application. Uh, for using it, they need uh, uh, admin privileges. So, uh, um, the AMT activator was tested on the following uh, uh, system, and we open source code of uh, this tool, and you can use on your choice this code. So, this code uh, contains an activation and deactivation command through HCI interface. So, now I want to show you demo. I have some. 
some problem. So, first system is uh, Windows 10. Uh, it's a uh, computer uh, uh, for attacker, and uh, now uh, attacker try to connect to a uh, remote system. It uh, will be known uh, VPro system without uh, activated Intel AMT. So then uh, attacker go. Uh, then we move to system 2 and uh, run our tool. Uh, especially for demonstration, we uh, also show how we delete uh, uh, Intel management engine interface driver for demonstration that our tool not need with a standard driver in your system. Delete the driver. Driver is absent. Open our tool and uh, run with uh, enable argument. Uh, the log says that's uh, all fine. Uh, uh, AM AMT uh, successful ac activated and the IP address was assigned. Now we come back to first system and uh, try our attempt. Try to reconnect uh, connect to Intel AMT to system uh, system two. Uh, of course, uh, because attacker. Uh, Run AMT activator. He know uh, username and correct password. Yeah, uh, we see a, a, web, a web interface of Intel AMT. So Intel AMT successful uh, uh, run on non VPro system. Uh, you can see uh, that is a gigabyte non VPro system. It's uh, Chipset uh, GAH uh, uh, 97, 97. So, it's all. Uh, uh, current version of uh, AMT activator has uh, some. Uh, limitation. Uh, for example, these uh, versions are only for Windows, uh, but uh, can be ported to Linux, of course. And uh, we use uh, own kernel drivers, and you make uh, implementation uh, which based on standard uh, Intel management interface driver. Uh, so it's uh, possible. So done. So perhaps now you guys are thinking about the uh, possibility of Intel AMT being used in malware. Uh, as for malicious code using Intel AMT, it's wor worth noting uh, that first, uh, Leg Legbacore researchers uh, have already come up with this idea in their research. Uh, second, quite recently, Platinum, uh, a malicious program, has been detected in the wild. Platinum uses Intel AMT, SOL, to secretly communicate with the CNC. Uh, in both cases, the malware does not use a vulnerability in the Intel AMT. Uh, contrary to it, the malware uses only common Intel AMT SOL uh, capabilities to keep communication stealthy and evade security applications. Uh, as Microsoft stated, uh, this channel works independently of the operating system, rendering any communication over it invisible to firewall and network monitoring applications running on the host device. So the combination of uh, the kind is, is not really fiction, but, but fact. So, on here. Uh, so now how can we mitigate this problem? Well, the community suggests several me methods. However, none of these techniques are really perfect. Uh, in some of these cases, the attacker has uh, a countermeasure for your mitigation technique. Uh, if you are a company that 
uses Intel AMT frequently or even infrequently uh, in your corporate network, you simply just can't block this port uh, on the network firewall because you need it. Uh, and then you can always use Meat Cleaner to remove this functionality. However, this is dangerous and can break your system. So, we, do, we didn't stop here, I went on. Uh, we had the question to be answered. What can a potential attacker do uh, if a system has a 1.5 megabyte firmware without uh, Intel AMT implementation? Uh, 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 this part of our research is progress uh, uh, now, and uh, so far we have a following result. The obvious way to swap the 1.5 uh, megabyte firmware images, image to 5 megabyte uh, firmware image on the system is to use the SPI flash hardware programma. This allows to bypass uh, uh, the flash regions logs. Uh, so some systems have uh, SPI flash regions unlocked, so this uh, opens the way to do the same from software. Uh, the administr uh, administration privileges are needed in case you need to uh, use a kernel driver or, for example, or exploit some uh, local privilege installation vulnerability uh, in BIOS, uh, in a SMM mode. So, uh, we have a, a successful attempt to make it, made it on gigabyte uh, system. Uh, so, uh, that's all now, while. So, what can an attacker do by uh, using Intel AMT? Uh, well, this t table demonstrates uh, what is possible with each chipset series. Uh, as you can see, there are still some question marks out there, and this is because there are just so many systems in so many different configurations. Uh, you know, for us, this is still a work in progress, um, so we're going to go ahead and ask you guys, you know, if you could help us out in this great endeavor, it would be uh, fantastic. Uh, now, this slide is a demonstration of how an attacker would maneuver uh, through your system. Uh, first, the attacker will check to see if your system has AMT enabled. And if, if you do, and it's not patched, then the attacker can just go, go right ahead with the Intel AMT exploit. Uh, however, uh, if it is patched, uh, the attacker can attempt to activate AMT or increase the size of the firmware and then activate AMT to use your, A to use your Intel AMT functionality. Uh, the thing is, uh, because Intel ME is ring minus three and occurs at the lowest level, uh, like we said before, people have to uh, patch this firmware themselves. And obviously this is going to be rare, be rare. So what this means is that this vulnerability will exist for a very long time. Uh, now just the, for some of our final takeaways, uh, we've established today how easy it is for an attacker to exploit our vulnerability in AMT web server. Uh, we also showed you how an attacker can activate and deactivate Intel AMT on vPro and non-vPro systems through undocumented features. Uh, and finally, we demonstrated uh, how it is possible to swap firmware images from 1.5 megabytes to uh, 5 megabytes uh, for, the for the goal of adding Intel AMT system. Uh, so we hope that our research has shed light and brought awareness to the security issues that Ring Minus 3 faces. Uh, so thank you for your attention today and uh, don't forget to use the hashtag ask about Intel AMT for you know, questions throughout the day. Thank you. Nice job. Very nice. Yeah.